All right, Shalom, I'm going to begin the lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Waha Rakah Kudash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, I'd like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much do honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in this work. And as always, when I say Shalom to the believers, you know the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, which this sitting right here is going to be simply entitled Surviving Babylon, which is the main objective. Seeing that this place is riddled with traps, and gins and pitfalls, pretty much an effort to snare the children of Israel. Matter of fact, let's start off with that real quick right here. In the book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter, and the 14th verse, it says, The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. Yeah, and this captive exile here will symbolize the elect of the nation of Israel. Those who earnest desire is to be released from this prison versus the two thirds of our people who have become somewhat acclimated to this place, America, Babylon, the great. So much so to where even when they're presented with the idea of forsaking this place, they become offended. And this is mainly due to them developing a certain sympathy for their oppressor, causing them to suffer from the condition known as Stockholm Syndrome which has contributed to our people not being willing to see past this place. And this is ultimately due to them putting all of their stock into America versus the elect of the nation of Israel who have been given somewhere of a glimpse into the kingdom of heaven, causing us to hasten to be released from this prison. Again, it says, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Now this pit right here represents America, which America in its very being, its very existence, is a testament of the fall of the children of Israel. And this is why it's known as a pit. Now real quick, let's click on this word pit. Yeah, and it says pit, destruction, grave. Look, it says, pit for catching lions. <laughs> pit for catching lions. Now, it's no coincidence that the lion serves as somewhat of a mascot, if you will, for the children of Israel. The lion symbolizes the nation of Israel, starting with the head tribe of the nation of Israel being the tribe of Judah. And that's pursuant to the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter and the 9th verse. Well, Judah is actually referred to as a crouching lion, meaning we have been subdued by our enemies, which is on display through the so-called white man's laws and legislations, his trends, and his overall rhetoric, which translates to the ideologies and philosophies here in America, Babylon the Great, which again is set up an effort to snare the children of Israel, to keep you in derision, and to further oppress the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American. And this can be proven by going right here to the book of Proverbs, the second chapter. And starting at the 18th verse, it says, For her house inclineth unto death. For her house inclineth unto death. Yeah, and it's her right here would represent America. Babylon the Great. See, it says, In her paths and her paths unto the dead. Now, these paths right here symbolizes the certain ideologies, philosophies, and overall doctrines that's on display here in America. From the extreme of these institutions and universities to something as subtle as some knucklehead with his own YouTube channel <laughs> spewing out his madness and pretty much everything in between. They would be considered paths or doctrines that leads to death 
For an example, when you consider one and whatever they might subscribe to, it drives their walk. It sets them off on a certain path, which when you consider a path, it has a destination. Now, when you go into that word destination, it translates to destiny, meaning your destiny centers around whatever you subscribe to. So for those of our people who have bought into whatever Esau, the so-called white man, has packaged and presented unto them, have now embarked on a path that inclineth unto death versus those of us who subscribe to the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah, which indeed is a path or doctrine that leads to life. See, again, it says, For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, none that go unto her, meaning America, Babylon the Great, return again. Simply put, this means for those of you who have made America your refuge and who subscribe to the rhetoric of the so-called white man, well, in no wise will you ever find that path that leads you to the return to your power. See, again, it says, none that go unto her return again. See, neither take they hold of the paths of life, which again translates to this doctrine. See that? Matter of fact, let's further prove this before we continue. This is the book of Psalms, the 25th chapter. And the fourth verse, it says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. <laughs> yeah, let's read this again. It says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me. See, teach me thy path and why is king david making this petition to the heavenly father to teach him his path because these paths represent this doctrine and why is it referred to as a path because it's pretty much the exit out of this pit america babylon the great matter of fact let's go there this is the book of psalms the 23rd chapter and starting at the first verse, it says, A psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah, what does the scripture mean when it says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures? Where these green pastures represents this truth. And to lie down in them means you make this truth your refuge. You are not to draw back once you're exposed to this truth and return to your folly or whatever you might have subscribed to prior to being introduced to this form of teaching. And this is what the scriptures are saying. Again, it says, he maketh me to lie down, see, in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters, which again is a metaphor for this truth. See, verse three, he restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. <laughs> yeah, let's read this again. It says, He restoreth my soul, and this is concerning the inner man. Once you digest this truth, if you will, it restores, it polishes up the inner man, the inner you. See? And this is what Yahweh Bashem Shah is considering the hearts of men. See that? Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick and we're going to go back. Stand in the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter and the 6th verse. It says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. See? Again, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So this proves that the Heavenly Father, through his Son, is considering the hearts of men the inner man, the inner you. Through this wisdom, the Lord has now saturated our weary souls. By way of this word, the Lord has revived us. And that's what we read and right here again when you go back to the book of Psalms. The 23rd chapter. And again, the third verse, it says, He restoreth my soul. See? And this feat was accomplished by way of this word going forth. 
this word springing forth. This is how we have been restored. And this is ultimately how the house of David is being rebuilt. See, again, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths. See that? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And again, those paths symbolizes this doctrine. See? For his name's sake, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and this valley of the shadow of death represents America, the pit. See? It says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, which again are metaphors for this truth, they comfort me. <laughs> See? So amid Babylon the Great, this shadow of death, where danger lurks, the Lord has preserved his elect. He has stabilized us. We have been kept alive, if you will, by way of this word, which serves as the life source. See? In the very catalyst of our survival. But it all starts with believing. And once you believe, you subscribe to this truth, which again serves as a path, an exit from out of this place, America, Babylon the Great. So, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.